All right. So today on the show, we are going to talk about uh, all about NPS, a very special segment uh, which you will see running throughout the week, where we are talking about various aspects of investing in NPS. And today we are going to help you understand how to select a pension fund manager and uh, how to know what kind of NPS scheme is right for you. Right, so it's all about NPS and today I have with me Firoz Aziz, Deputy C1 and Rati Wealth uh, on the show to explain all of this and decode the right strategy for you under NPS. Uh, Firoz, good evening and welcome to the show. Uh, so Firoz, uh, uh, I guess there are 11 pension fund managers under NPS uh, uh, that have got the license and where investors can go and plan their pension uh, and the retirement planning. Uh, but how do we go about it? Uh, you know, just like mutual funds, there are so many schemes for you, you just don't know. Uh, uh, you need to understand yourself as an investor first. But when we talk about NPS, you know, uh, it's slightly a, a very structured investment and maybe a goal is very specific. We know we are talking about retirement and we know we have 11 uh, pension fund managers, but we have schemes uh, as per every investor risk appetite. So uh, let's deep dive into the type of schemes you're talking about and uh, uh, anything specific about pension fund managers in terms of their scheme performance that you might want to highlight to our viewers. Yes, Kavita, like you rightly said, uh, NPS has 11 different alternatives uh, for a person to choose from who is going to be the manager. Firstly, these managers are also mutual fund managers. So the good part is their experience of managing money is not restricted to only managing the NPS 11 lakh crores, but the mutual fund industry, which is almost about 70 lakh crores now, uh, is also managed by the same 11 people. They are a part of uh, except, of course, you have some insurance companies also, uh, like Max Life uh, Pension uh, Fund, who does not have an AMC. Uh, but point I'm trying to make is the experience is reasonably vast, uh, in spite of only managing 11,73,000 crores on the NPS platform. That's one. And the same guys are available at almost 100 the cost uh, than a mutual fund is. So it's a good platform uh, to get the professional management at significantly lower cost. Uh, and that's what the government has done uh, for uh, government employees and the rest of us as well. So that's point two. Now, how do you choose is what is so unique about these 11 is the top three uh, pensions, uh, pension plans or pension companies uh, actually manage 90% of the money. Uh, so, uh, so that's very unique. So these might have 11, but the smallest one has only uh, 116 crores, whereas the largest one has 4,33,385 crores, which is SBI pension fund. Uh, so I would stick to the top four uh, as my filtered shortlist uh, to begin with. And since I have a provision of a change, uh, I would first not go with the smaller ones, go with the bigger ones as the first filter. And then, of course, a more deep dive in terms of risk and uh, reward is to be taken into account. So the top three, if I want to focus on and, you know, if I just want to talk about the, the equity scheme, what is so different in terms of their portfolio construction? Uh, are we also looking at uh, the similar kind of portfolio construction that we might see in a flexi cap fund or multi cap fund or it is generally a, a, a diversified strategy across market caps that these kind of schemes have? Uh, yes, Kavita, they have a uh, more like a flexi cap equivalent. Uh, which has a skew towards large cap. There's also mid cap and small cap. Uh, multi cap has a larger proportions in mid and small. Uh, but I think these pension funds have a smaller proportion. So they're more like a flexi cap category uh, than a multi cap category. That's point one. The return dispersion uh, may not be too large in three year periods. The, the dispersion of the best one and the worst one uh, is about two, two and a half percent only. But in long periods of time, this differential could mean a huge rupee value. So it's important to manage your NPS account because that's a lot of money over periods of time you've accumulated. You just have to every year reevaluate whether I should keep my fund managers same or not. <laughs> so that's the point I would definitely want to tell investors or viewers saying that if you've bought an NPS, if you've not made any change for the last four years in terms of your manager, maybe you're required to reevaluate it and make some changes and every year revalidate whether the, your choice is correct or not. So the top three are SBI, Pension Fund, Private Limited, LIC, and UTI. 
Uh, I would stick to the top one. Of course, for the last three years, the performance of SBI has been marginally lower than the other two. But SBI's experience on the mutual fund side in managing risk uh, and also the return is quite high. And that's why I would, I would choose SBI, which incidentally is the largest. Uh, uh, Feroz, at one point in time, how many pension fund managers can we have or uh, can we have it uh, uh, diversified in terms of an NPS portfolio? Maybe if I want to make, I want to take an equity scheme from one pension fund and uh, the uh, 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 corporate scheme from one. Can this be done? Can we have more than one pension fund manager and their schemes in our portfolio? See, as far as I understand, Kavita, you have to choose one for a specific year. And you can't choose multiple. All right. So when we shift to the other pension fund manager, is there any kind of a transition fees or any cost that's involved? No, no, no. You don't have to. You just have to, sure. uh, in the central record keeping, uh, which happens, a central record keeping agency, you have to update it on their portal and there is no cost to actually change your fund manager. Feroz, I also want to I want to understand the amount of uh, uh, debt offerings that NPS has under them because you know what happens is we are talking about retirement goal and a lot of people are still not comfortable uh, having an equity exposure to that particular investment or that money. So, uh, uh, what's the provision under NPS for this? And uh, well, AIF is again one question which maybe we'll uh, we'll ask you later on. But then, yeah, uh, for risk averse uh, investors under NPS. Yes, Kavita, what uh, in the in on the debt category you have corporate bonds uh, and also the government bond. Okay, these are the two debt alternatives and equity. Of course, we've spoken adequately about. Uh, so, in the corporate bond, what happens is for the benefit of the viewer, uh, you are lending to corporates uh, and not to the government. In the government bonds, the lending is happening to government of India uh, and uh, state governments partially. So government bonds and corporate bonds are the two alternatives. But what is so uh, striking is that the corporate bonds performance has been lower than the government bonds performance uh, in certain cases, especially the three-year period. As you can see on your screen, uh, for the viewer, I'm just saying, uh, government bonds ideally are lower on risk. So they should ideally throw up a lower return. But on the contrary, for a three-year period and also a five-year period, they have thrown up a worse off performance than government bonds. So it, almost makes corporate bonds a redundant alternative in NPS. Feroz, now talking about uh, 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 equity schemes itself, um, uh, can we have more than one in our portfolio, in our NPS portfolio? Yes, uh, Kavita, yes, you can have more than one uh, equity portion. Uh, what is important is that these are all very well diversified uh, portions. Uh, what I think is the most key decision which will determine the fate of the money is going to be between these asset classes, how much do you allocate? See, the selection of the fund manager is of a lesser importance than the asset class. See, we in India have been made to believe for long periods of time that debt is the safest instrument. Yes, agreed, it is the safest instrument if you wish to have accumulate money for your real estate purchase down payment or buy a car. That's the safest instrument. But for retirement, the safest instrument is equity because it will it'll, it'll protect you against inflation. So most often than not, the easiest choice is debt. But that's where I would want each of you uh, as viewers to introspect. Uh, debt is very risky for the long term because it does not beat inflation. Uh, and and uh, if you see, quite a few of our uh, family members get some pension insurance policy which matures with 30,000, 40,000, which somebody has bought. The value of 40,000 back then was reasonably large, but today with 40,000, I can't even buy a phone. Uh, so so uh, debt is the riskiest asset class for the long term because it depreciates value in terms of purchasing power. Uh, Feroz, one last question and then we'll wrap up this uh, uh, discussion on NPS. Uh, uh, we are talking about equity schemes now. Uh, 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 looking at the exposure in the entire NPS portfolio and looking at these schemes which are uh, 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 as per tier 1 account, are we also talking about the same schemes via tier 2 account also? We know that tier 1 is a mandatory pension account that one needs to have. But tier 
two is an uh, optional account. So if one wants to also invest via tier two, are we getting the benefit of the same schemes or there are separate schemes across categories uh, uh, for tier two? No, that's a very, very valid question. And that reminds me of one very important uh, message I would want to give. So firstly, the schemes are identical. You can access uh, the schemes, tier one and tier two. The differential is largely with respect to the flexibility of withdrawal. Uh, if you buy stuff in tier one, uh, there is no tax saving, but uh, you will have to hold it till, uh, till, till, till the age of 60. Even after 60, there is a restriction on you that you have to buy one third of that money needs to get into an annuity, which is going to be a taxable cash flow. But what I was trying to allude to, Kavita, this is a very, very good uh, uh, suggestion to a young person. Let's assume he or she is at 35, 40. They can keep investing in tier one uh, till almost they reach 59 years of age. Uh, let's assume if I've put 50,000 rupees every month uh, in like an SIP in tier two, there's a huge capital gain which will happen at the age of 40 if you start this SIP in tier two till the age of 59, which is 19 years, uh, you will have a large capital gain because profits would be enormous for 19 years. But on the 59th year, if I switch this to tier one, and before I turn 60, if I switch it to tier one, the capital gain tax is zero on this switch. Uh, because capital gain tax today uh, is increased to 12.5%. What I'm trying to highlight is a young 35, 40 year professional uh, year old professional, if he starts accumulating in the form of SIP, and just before he retires, if he switches the entire capital from tier two to tier one, it is going to be capital gain tax exempt, which means uh, that's a huge, huge value, uh, which a person can accumulate and not pay capital gain tax, which is 12.5% on mutual funds. All right, so that's a huge benefit. Uh, uh, but it's time up on this uh, special edition on NPS today. Thank you so much, Feroz, for taking time out and helping our viewers today. Thank you.